Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday, the 1st of July 2019, and the time has just gone 9.45 British summer time. Uh, first things first, happy Canada Day to any uh, Canadian viewers out there. Uh, today is the 1st of July, so today is Canada Day. Um, looking back at the uh, events um, in Japan over the weekend, uh, we've had a quite a decent start to the European equity market this weekend, uh, this, this, this Monday, on the back of the events of the weekend. Um, trade relationships between the US and, and, uh, and China seem to have improved, have improved somewhat. Um, both sides agreed not to increase further tariffs on each other, although President Trump said he's, he's in no hurry to, uh, to reduce the tariffs that are already in place uh, on Chinese goods. There seems to be a slight loosening of the um, of the ban on U.S. companies um, dealing with Huawei, the Chinese tech company. So that's seen as kind of another step in the right direction. And but basically, uh, it we've had a large push higher in Asian equity markets overnight on the back of the G20 update, and we and that has spilled over to the session here in Asia. Uh, we've also had a meeting uh, between President Trump and King Young, King, Kim Jong-un of, of North Korea, uh, the first sitting U.S. president to visit North Korea. So that is seen as another kind of step in the right direction for political stability uh, in that region. Um, despite the fact that we've had um, disappointing and not overly impressive manufacturing numbers, non-manufacturing and Kaishin manufacturing figures out of China o- over the weekend, that seemed to have have have, um, have been, have been um, um, overridden by the fact that trade tensions between the U.S. and China seem to have uh, de- decreased ever so slightly. But it is worth pointing out there are some major sticking points, uh, particularly in relation to intellectual property protection. Um, you know, the, the as a way of smoothing things over, the Chinese government uh, committed to purchasing more agricultural vehicles, uh, agricultural machinery from the United States. Uh, but essentially, there are no amount of tractors and combine harvesters that China can buy that are going to actually uh, ignore the fact uh, the U.S. are majorly concerned uh, about intellectual property protection over in China. Um, I'll take a quick look now at the week ahead calendar so we can have a, have a look at some of the major events of the week and then we can look at some of the, uh, some of the major markets and what's been going on. So this morning, we've had uh, a raft of manufacturing PMI numbers, uh, broadly speaking, out of Europe. Uh, we've had disappointed numbers from the UK, and uh, they've been poor numbers from Italy and Germany as well. Um, tomorrow, we have an industry decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, we also have the OPEC meeting uh, runs for a couple of days, so the major oil producers are meeting um, uh, and are meeting. And they're tipped to extend the existing uh, production costs that are in place. Uh, this, by the way, uh, the week ahead article can be found on our platform, cmcmarkets.com, under news and analysis. Uh, and you'll, you'll find the week ahead, platform, week ahead article. On, the, uh, on Wednesday, we have the various different um, services, uh, services um, numbers coming out from major economies around the world. On Wednesday, we have, we have figures out from Sainsbury's, the British supermarket uh, retailer. On Wednesday, we have full year figures from Purple Bricks. On Thursday, we have full year figures from Super Dry. Um, on Friday, International Consolidated Airlines have the June traffic figures. And on on Friday, we have the all important US non farm payrolls report. And this is often seen as the most important economic indicator. Uh, of, of the month, uh, p- please keep an eye out for the kind of full details of the report. Uh, not only not only the headline figure, but also the unemployment rate, and more importantly, uh, what's supposed to be coming more important uh, to keep an eye on, on is the wage growth rate. We're actually going to be holding a live non-farm payrolls webinar event on that particular day, covering the uh, covering the numbers and the market reaction. So if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under learn. Under webinars and events, uh, you will see it here on the 5th of July. So like I was saying, global equity markets um, have, have had a decent move to the upside on the back of the update, on the back of the G20 meeting. Starting off with the FTSE 100, uh, we can see that the, you know, the market's been in a solid trend, upward trend uh, for basically the, the last six months. The FTSE 100 has pushed on higher here. This morning, we've hit levels, hit levels not seen. Since late April, so I'll give indication of how bullish things are looking, and if we and if we continue to press on higher from here, I'm sure we take out the April highs. 
we could be looking at targeting this area here, um, 11 not seen since late September, and that is 7,558. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards 7,600. I want to talk about this uh, blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 73.45, and it's quite uh, it's quite an important uh, metric to keep an eye out for because we can see here on a few occasions in uh, <clears throat> in recent weeks and months, the metric acted as support um, throughout June, and that that metric, uh, well, just north of it, uh, acted as resistance in May. So. And we've seen a lot of movement in around that. We've seen a lot of movement in around that area. Uh, so it's possible if the market does manage to have a, have a drift lower, we could see support come into play in around 7,400, or perhaps from the 50-day moving average itself in at 7,345. And even if you drop below that, uh, support could be found from this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average. We can see that it managed to act as a support on a few occasions uh, in the last few months. And uh, that comes into play in at 7,293. But the 50 moving average is particularly relevant because the FTSE is holding above its 50 moving average. And we'll, we'll see if we would take a look at the DAX, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. They're all holding firmly above their relative 50, their respective rather 50 day moving averages. So we can take a look now on the, uh, the DAX, the Euro market. Similar situation whereby the DAX has been in a solid upward trend uh, for the last six months. That the, the highs here of today have uh, comfortably taken out the highs of, uh, of early May. We're back to levels not seen uh, really since since the uh, the back end of 2018. So give an indication of how bullish the DAX uh, has been. So if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be if we continue to press on higher from this area. We could be looking at targeting this area here um, in around 12,740. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here, last seen in July last year, uh, in around 12,887. If you do see a move to the downside in the DAX, this region here, in around 12,400, uh, might act as support, or possibly this blue line here, uh, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 12,156. Like with the FTSE 100, as we saw a moment ago, uh, there's been a few occasions in recent weeks and months where the DAX, the, the DAX's 50-day moving average, did provide support. And once again, if a metric has, provided, has been relevant in the past, it makes it more likely it will be so in the future. Obviously, there are no guarantees. <coughs> Excuse me. So looking at the uh, the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones after having but by a large, a large rally throughout 2019, had a fairly sizable correction uh, between April and early June, which you notice a steady uh, move to the upside, and we are expecting to be to be um, um, pressing on higher once the the cash session in New York uh, gets underway. We can see that the Dow Jones is comfortably above its uh, 200 moving, sorry, 50 moving average, this blue line here, uh, which comes into play just north of 26,000. And essentially, while we hold above that metric, um, and it's likely we could see further gains coming in from here. So if we do look to press higher on the Dow Jones, we could be looking at heading back up towards in around um, the, kind of the, the highs of late September last year. Not too far away from in around the kind of uh, 26,950, there and thereabouts mark. And if you go beyond that, well, we could be looking at heading up towards the psychologically important 27,000. It's only really if you have a, a size to break below this, this area here, the uh, the 50 moving average, just, just north of 26,000, could then we be, you know, be concerned that the uh, that the bullish trend has come to an end and we could see further move to the downside. Uh, we could see support coming in around the kind of 25,600 mark for coming to play where this trend line uh, comes into, which this trend line comes into play. Take a look now at the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, uh, as you can see here, has, has gapped higher over the weekends on the back of the optimism of the G20. Um, we're currently, the S&P 500 could actually well open, um, could print an intraday all-time high, uh, which cash trading gets underway, but that isn't for a few hours yet. So the, the sentiment is clearly bullish in relation to U.S. equities. And if you continue to get a press on higher from here on the S&P 500, 
We're currently expecting the cash market to open at 2000. 972 if we continue to press on higher from here we could be looking at directing the psychologically important 3000 mark any moves to the downside and the s p 500 may attract uh, new, new buyers buying on the dip has been a, a popular strategy uh, in the last few weeks and in a wider 2019 period so if the market does turn lower support could be found from this area here in around 2910 2900 um, or possibly even from this this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 20, 2,881. And the reason why I was kind of mentioning the 50-day moving average um, and, and, and its importance uh, on the FTSE 100 video or, or chart was because uh, Dow theory tells us that the averages must confirm each other. And we've, we've now seen the FTSE 100 the DAX, the Dow Jones, and the S&P 500 all come to be above their respective 50-day moving averages. And you could be, if you're buying it, if you're, if you're, if the while those markets are, are above their respective 50-day moving averages, and while all markets are above their respective 50-day moving averages, the, the, the FTSE, the DAX, the Dow, the S&P, you can be more confident that the wider bullish trend is going to continue. And obviously, there are no guarantees, but it just makes the makes the, the bullish, the wider bullish move more likely. So we've, to kind of uh, show you the flip side of the coin, we've had a, a reversal uh, on some of the kind of flight of quality assets. So last uh, last week we saw gold print a six. Sorry, uh, uh, sorry, not, not last week, but uh, yeah, and, and the last actually yes, it was last week. Apologise. Last week we saw gold print uh, its highest level in over six years. It got up to it around uh, fourteen thirty-nine. But we have seen that the, the metal drift back a bit, drift back a bit at the back end of last week, and in light of the, uh, the in light of the the news from the U.S.-China trade talks over the weekend, we have seen the metal gap lower. So the metal has pushed to the downside. It's been a steady decline in positive momentum. So we could see the gold market uh, if we do break below um, 1382. If we do do, do, uh, do drop below this area here. We could see uh, a further move to the downside in the gold, down possibly as low as 1360, or perhaps even down at this area here in around 1350-1345. The wider upward trend and the fact that we hit a six-year high would kind of suggest that you know the market is quite bullish, and it is worth noting that the, the, the gold market rallied something in around in, in around the region of about nine percent. Um, in, in the month of June, nine or ten percent in the month of June, so it was a major move to the upside. So we might see the wider upward trend continue, but at a less aggressive pace. So we might we might um, pull back um, down to what possibly down towards kind of 1360 before things mellow out and potentially look to kind of press on higher again. So if we do have, if the wider upward trend does continue. Resistance could be coming to play in around 1410 or perhaps at the recent high in around 1439 and then if you go beyond that We could be looking at heading back up towards the uh, 1485 region this area here levels not really seen since about since uh, late April uh, 2013 uh, We talked about how um, the major oil, position, oil producers OPEC and some of the and some of the uh, some of the oil producers that aren't in OPEC but often work aligned with OPEC. Uh, often, you know, the likes of Russia often referred to as you know the OPEC Plus Alliance or, or OPEC Plus. Um, so take a look now what's going on on the oil market. And throughout 2019, oil has kind of moved in the same direction as equity. So oil is often a good barometer for the strength of the global economy. If the global economy is weakening, the perception of demand falls off, and we see weakness in the oil price. But uh, take a look here at Brent. We can see that that that, that, that there's a, uh, this region here in around just kind of around sixty-one dollars a barrel in around kind of uh, sixty thirty as actually a fairly decent floor. And we have seen the oil market push on higher. And in fact, we've recently hit a level not seen basically since the end of May. We're coming up against the two hundred moving average, this red line here, which comes to play at sixty in around. Uh, 67.40, and if you can press on higher from here um, on break on uh, break through it all, we could be looking at trying to get a $69 a barrel, and then beyond that, could take us up towards this area here in at 70 spot 63. If you if the Brent market does manage to turn over on itself again, we could be looking heading down back down towards $63 a barrel, and then below that, we could be looking at testing the $60 area.
like I said, we've already heard from Russia and Saudi Arabia, and it's, and it looks like we could have the, the existing production cuts extended uh, for about six six to nine months. So the last I heard, nine months is looking to be the more likely of the two. So similar situation here on WTI. The market has found a decent flow in around the kind of fifty in the, in around the kind of fifty spot fifty region or fifty one dollar region here. If you continue to press on higher from here and hold above the two of the moving average, which comes to play at 50, 58, spot 44, we could be looking at pressing on higher and uh, heading back up toward this area here in around 64. We can see on a few occasions that there's a consolidation in around $64 a barrel on, uh, on WTI. So keep an eye on for that area, for that area uh, in terms of upside move. If you do drop back below the kind of 57 region here, we could be looking at heading back down toward this area here in around 54, spot 75, or down as low as 54. Take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So the wider view has been very much to the downside, but we did see a fair, we did see the euro dollar since late May fair stage a fairly decent comeback. Uh, in fact, only last week levels not seen since the middle of March, so it's fairly quite bullish in terms of the rebound. But you can see here that the, that the market has managed to effectively fall back towards the 200 moving average, uh, and we're currently trading probably a bit below that. Um, and if we if we can hold, if we can while we hold below the 200 moving average, it's likely that the wider downward trend that has been in place for a number of months is going to continue, and we can be looking heading back down towards 113, and if it moves below that, it could take us back down towards this area here south of 112. And if you have a break below that, it could take us back down towards one spot 11.10. Uh, if you do manage to kind of press on higher and take out this high, this high here in around one one spot 14.12, if you do press on higher from there, we could be looking at targeting the uh, the the the, uh, the mid may ha mid March highs of in around one spot 14.48. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the uh, the one fifteen region. And lastly now, take a look at the pound versus the US dollar. So the, uh, the pound versus the US dollar has been a fairly obvious downward trend basically um, for the last number of months. Nice series of lower lows and lower highs. There was a move back up, there was a press higher um, in, in late June, but the market has seemed to kind of turn lower yet again. Essentially, while we can hold south of this area here in at one spot 28, it's likely that the kind of wider negative trend is going to continue to be in play. And if you do move lower from here, we could be looking at heading back down towards 126. And if you take off the recent uh, the lows of the middle of June in at one spot 2506, we could be looking at targeting this area here, um, the lows of uh, December last year in at one spot 2476. It's only really if you have a size of break north of, uh, of 128. Could then we look heading back up towards this red line here, the true the moving average, which comes into play at one spot 29.18, and, and move beyond, beyond that could take us up to the uh, psychologically important 130 mark. Uh, that's all for me this week. If you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos, uh, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.